Welcome everybody to the non-dual astrology transmission for April 2024 and I just want to wish you all happy eclipse season. I think a lot of people are in a process and hopefully uh, this little transmission will help you to land with the energies. I'm just going to let people who may be new to the channel and uh, to these transmissions to just quickly read this little slide while I talk on other things. And we do have uh, a longer transmission about what is non-dual astrology. And I also have an even longer one for people who are keen because I really feel that non-dual astrology helps us to see very important triangulated nuances that help us to be one step ahead. If we want to talk about Tantra, this weaving of things, by working in a non-dual way, we, we, we come to a deeper dance with time. And the more we can learn to dance with time rather than be controlled by time, the more we're going to liberate and to come into a higher expression of ourselves and to also bring about a higher iteration of the reality in the plane that we inhabit. So just a little heads up on some things that we have uh, coming. Uh, I have some space for 2024 readings or full non-dual readings. Uh, you can check our website. And yeah, just, just somebody asked the other day, and I do do 2024 readings if you just want one for this year or if you want one for how the eclipses are maybe going to work for you, both, both eclipses this year, both sets of eclipses. Um, and also what I'm very excited to be telling you about is that uh, my book, Shambhala Warriors, Keys to a Golden Age, is launching in, in around the 8th of May. And it's going to be available for pre-order very soon on Amazon. And yeah, I mean, I don't want to take up too much time talking about this. You'll probably find the odd little webinar and a transmission on my YouTube channel. So please do like and subscribe because, yeah, I, I, I feel this book has a lot of keys for people who may be struggling to make the, 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 the connections between certain branches of thought or practicalities in the earth that we are in. And... I think a lot of people have despair because they think, oh, my goodness, we, you know, we're facing all these awful ecological disasters or all these different things. And actually, from the years of working with many indigenous tribes and with Dharma keepers and doing a lot of study, I really do feel that we have some beautiful, beautiful openings that also correlate with what some key astrologers are saying and, and indeed what people are saying about this eclipse which is why i'm talking about it that really we may be further along than we think if we choose to be resilient and focused and dedicated and that's why the book is there to help people to to land with a deeper synthesis because i think a lot of people feel fragmented and don't quite know what to do and I really do hope that this book serves many people to help them to really step into this role of being a Shambhala warrior which is one of the reasons why so many of us have incarnated at this time. Alongside that I'm going to be offering new coaching opportunities for visionaries, change makers and spiritual entrepreneurs people who really need to actually come into true natural law to work with the ego, to work with the timelines, and to work with some of these visionary teachings so that they can bring their offerings to a next level if we want to create an earth shift. Our team also have a lot of trauma-informed work, quantum art therapy, uh, mini readings, lots of different offerings. So please do get in touch, like and subscribe. And uh, very soon you're going to find a lot more offerings from us. So in terms of the general astrology, we have Mercury retrograding from the beginning of the month, right in the middle of eclipse season, of course. So if the eclipse season wasn't already um, signaling for us to to not make any hasty decisions and for us to know that we're in a very deep work in progress where there are going to be tweaks needed. 
Mercury retrograde, I feel like this is a, a, a sacred mechanism that is thrust into place to really, really create that little bit of chaos and course diversion to bring us back on track. And so Aries, in, in Vedic astrology, Aries is going, Mercury is going to be retrograding from Aries into Pisces and Mercury is debilitated in Pisces. So there could be quite a lot of kind of finding that you're, you're tongue tied. You don't, you can't quite get what you needed to out there. And again, I think this, I, I'm going to tell you more about this, I guess, but I have to be careful about what I've shared with our group who are doing the eclipse group, um, the, the eclipse journey and what I'm going to share with you here, because I could go into great depth. And I know most of you won't listen if I go in great depth. The short version of this is, and as I'm going to show in the Vedic astrology slide, what we've got right now is we've also got Rahu in Pisces. And so Rahu is the forward thinking karmic node, but he's also very delusional and it has an insatiable appetite and it can be addictive and a bit crazy. And so with Rahu there, a lot of people are going to be feeling their spirituality upgrade through the eclipse, this big solar eclipse on the April the 8th. And not only have we got Mercury kind of coming in and being a little bit confused there, but Rahu and and what and especially with where, where Saturn's going to be moving into, we could be seeing quite a lot of ungrounded spiritual awakenings, okay? And I think that Mercury retrograding around this is also just saying, please don't go online making any grand proclamations about, you know, being Jesus and stuff like that. So it, 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 there's method in the madness with being a little bit confused with, with communication. Of course, as we know, and if you don't know, just a little heads up is we don't look at eclipses. In Vedic astrology, it, it, it's actually important to maybe fast on an eclipse day, to not take anything big on. And I was on a panel with Sasha Stone, Chief Phil Lin, Alex Ling, um, Huna Flash, um, Ejna Fleur, uh, Jane Evershed, um, and... Yeah, and some um, Mexican oracles and elders who I've not worked with before. And uh, this was a few days ago. And it, in the Americas, there's a lot of very big uh, aspiration being put into this eclipse. It's being called the Great American Eclipse. And Alex Ling, who has a lineage of Freemasonry in his in his line, uh, uh, has been able to access previously hidden texts which say that for at least 5,000 years, people have been heralding this particular eclipse on the 8th as a massive global event. And I just wanna say, no one event is ever the thing. I, I There are always these events, okay? And um, we have to also be careful. With the Americas holds very important keys. And I personally, uh, feel that strongly. This is why I spend a lot of time in Mexico and why I've been very involved in the Eagle Condor work since 2012, which is now being really deeply inaugurated by the tribal elders across the Americas who recently converged in Palenque to, to really authorize the, 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 the harmonization of the Americas, which is, is prophesized, which is really a tantra of bringing the masculine and the feminine together. The eagle represents the masculine in the north of the Americas, and the condor represents the, the south and the feminine. So the Americas have always been seen as the heart center in many ways. And so if you have this unification of masculine and feminine converging, and the, the tribes have not authorized and come together and sat in the sacred place of Palenque to, to welcome in those energies. Then the eclipse is coming through and is very much a dance between masculine and feminine, sun and moon. And it's also, of course, with Rahu and Ketu, the, the, the karmic nodes sitting there as well. And the main energy in this eclipse in Vedic astrology is sitting over in Pisces. So we've got this huge Piscean spiritual energy and Pisces is of course the last sign of the Zodiac. So we have a very strong transcendental energy that's been activated on the eclipse 
But as you'll see later, we also have uh, cautionary notes in there. And I definitely feel that there's something bigger foot. Um, I got guided very strongly to make a, an eclipse journey and we have a beautiful group of people on it. And looking at the nuances through non-dual astrology, I could see some of the, yeah, the, 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 the things we have to be careful about as this portal opens because of some of the teachings some of the planets are giving us. And I've also applied that to Kalashakra astrology. And yeah, yeah, there's work to be done. And so part of what I shared on the panel was just, we always have to be careful not to go into like a Christocentric or a Eurocentric or a Hollywood centric way of seeing that one singular moment is going to create everything. And it's all about America. Yeah. And when I say America that way, I'm saying it like people say it, like they mean the U S I rarely say America for the U S and we just have to be very careful, careful about narratives that only speak to that. But on the flip side, I really want to say that I really get what the Eagle Condor prophecy is about and the role that the Americas has to play. And this reunification of the Americas, because pre-Columbus, there were routes, you know, I've, 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 I've traveled those routes, you know, um, and there were, there were Mayan gateways that then went from the Mayan lands down to the Incan lands with the Amazon in between, you know, um, and, you know, there were, I, I, I've worked with, uh, we've done eagle camp condor gatherings actually at those gateways where the Amazon meets the Andes in the south of Colombia, or at least starts to. And where people used to come from the north of the Americas and then purify by working with, with Yahe and then to, to then enter into the Amazon, purified and aligned with the forest to then make the rest of their journey. And so, the fragmentation and the trauma that we've seen through the Americas is also very much what manifests in our own body and in our own fracturing of our own masculine feminine. And so the amazing possibilities that are being seen for many of us to step into that deeper iteration of ourselves can be seen through what's happening in the celestial bodies because of where Rahu is positioned and the fact that the celestial energy is really sitting over in Pisces on the eighth, but yeah, as, as you'll hear me say, I'm coming in being like stringent granny, just to warn you, because again, this is the thing we can sometimes destabilize. We, we have to understand it, it does, it's not like somebody comes with a big magic wand and all our karma goes away on the, set, the 8th of April, or that the cash points all explode on the 8th and we don't have any more money or any more suffering or any more institutions. And these things are markers. And of course, it's a wonderful day for us to really spend in meditation with each other. Um, and actually, maybe I'll speak a little bit, I remember, on the actual energy of the day in the other systems. Uh, so I didn't do that in my slides, but actually, I'm just realizing some people have asked me for this. So in another form. So what I'm going to tell you is that first thing I'm going to tell you is that the nakshatra of the day on the 8th of the of April is, is Ashwini. And Ashwini is the first sign of the zodiac. Uh, so the so the moon cut the moon moves from Revati, which is like the, the the end of the transcendental journey, and then goes into Ashvini. So it's it's sitting between both. So that's like a marker that we've we're going into a whole new cycle, okay? Where the moon is at. So that happens over the cusp day, the cusp of the eclipse day. So that's a very powerful marker in itself of a transcendental journey. Actually, I'm just going to say a little bit more now. On the in the dream spell calendar, we begin the dog wave spell on that day, and the dog is really about love and loyalty. It's also the dog because the dog works with heart energy. It's about this importance of us as of com coming out of the ego and it just being about ourselves and coming into true heart resonance. And when people do work on the new sphere, the planetary 
So, so the new sphere is the part of the planetary field, the bioenergy field of the planet that connects in with our consciousness. You know, there are different fields. And there's there are the bits where we, you know, when we talk about things like the Schumann resonance and different things, where our consciousness connects with the planetary consciousness. And interestingly, on the eclipse day, it is dog with spell begins, and dog is the easiest access point for the new sphere. Okay, so we really do have this ut uttering through the celestial bodies that there is a really great possibility to do this kind of devotional quantum work on the eclipse day, which is what people like Sasha Stone and Alex Ling were talking about in the panel. And this whole galvanizing of a lot of aspirational energy for the new spiritual liberated human to, to evolve. And also the finding of our soul tribe, because dogs very much about that. And a lot of people are now coming in to, to, to really feeling where their core community, their guilds are. A lot of people are saying, oh, I'm going to go, I'm really going to go move to Costa Rica. And other people are saying, yeah, I just really find it's my time to get my land with my people. And dog wave spells very much about finding the real, the, your real, your real soul tribe. So that's happening. And then on that day as well, in the um, traditional Chokil uh, calendar, the sacred calendar of the Mayans, we are in nine Kameh, and Kameh is life, death, rebirth. And nine is about honoring and transformation through the feminine principle. And when we were on the panel uh, the other night, there was a lot of discussion about really moving beyond the outmoded vestiges of the patriarchy and the rising of the feminine. And the tribal leaders were saying, you know, it is to totally acknowledged by all of us that it's the, the time for the feminine to rise. And what I want to say to that, that doesn't mean the feminine to rise and the masculine to fall, but it's this beautiful upgrading of us coming into this tantric union within our own energy body, but also in a harmonization. And that is seen then through the reunification of the Americans, the heartland. So interestingly, you've got this heartland reunifying North and South. And then we come into the love, the love wave spell. So, you know, we do have a lot of signs that something's really afoot in a really powerful way, right? And the energy just keeps giving. And, and something I'll say is also we have uh, both sun and moon are going to be exalted you know, from late on the 8th of May to, the, to early on the 10th of May, depending on where you live. Um, so this is this like the majesty of Tantra, of masculine and feminine meeting is actually almost arising through the eclipse, but it that cannot become embodied until it does its work. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of you already feel quite tired or unable to process certain things or to know the answer in certain things because eclipses give us this confusion of, I don't quite know what's next. They, they kind of wipe us out of what we thought was certain in order to bring us new new batches of teachings. And we're in a new stage of karmic teachings here with Rahu Ketu going to Virgo Pisces, which is the first of a series of eclipses that are doing this. So this whole journey of this, firstly, understanding how to transition to being a spiritual being in a material world that's shifting is going to be a very important teaching. But for many people I know, Many people have had awakenings, but they're really, you know, it, it's how do you transition properly? And I see a lot of people trying to do things too quickly and then they realize, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't pay the bills because they, they think they're just gonna be like a celebrity healer after doing Reiki one or something like this. And this, this concept of how we are all gonna transition into being these Dharma beings and how we can still live in the world that we're transforming, that that's all up, but it's been karmically shifted. So I think a lot of people are going to find that their spiritual vocations are arising. But I just really want to say there's no there's no quick fix and no no way you can bypass. You have to do the work, as we'll see later. So um, yeah, so that that can also be seen through what's going to be happening with the Saturn Mars conjunction, which is um, Saturn and Mars are conjunct through the month. 
and they they peak in their conjunction on the 10th and the 11th and this saturn is really cold mars is really hot they're both really hard workers so it's good to get a lot of work done but there can be a kind of sense of frustration pressure and i think with the eclipse energy also bringing that and then mercury retrograde just giving us confusion you can see why the universe is saying please don't try to unveil anything right now please don't try to think you know all the answers and yeah just be humble do work hard and don't think just wait just wait everything has to go through everything's got to go through a series of protocols and interestingly by the way we have put on the april the 7th we have our saturnian goat brigade day the reason we call it that is because capricorn is a goat and is you know very much about governance and rules and regulations and also doing well being an entrepreneur and so we're really helping people to understand the importance of ethics and multidimensional ethics and all of those things. So we have a whole day retreat available or you can come for just one session. So, yeah, there's a lot of teaching coming in. This is the, the mechanism. We have this spiritual blast coming through, but then there is pressure. There is Saturn just saying, don't get cocky. This is this is the perfection. And as you'll see, when I go into the dream spell and the Mayan calendars, there's a reason for that because a lot of people get things wrong in natural order of things. So they think I've had this done out load, I'm gonna go and do this big thing now, rather than honoring the true way that the ancients did it, which is coming back to the yin, to dream first, to let it sit in a non-conceptual space before you start to try to dissipate the energy by putting your ego behind it. And so you're gonna see these very clever mechanisms that the celestial bodies are bringing us. By the way, I usually open space, but I already opened space earlier because I was doing another reading. So I just wanna just give my gratitude to celestial bodies and the rishis, but uh, they already know that, but thank you again. We also have the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which I'm not going to go into in great depth because you can find plenty about that um, on the internet because I don't usually work with the outer planets too much. But again, there's a massive transformative expansion energy coming later in the month. But, let, but this is the thing. It's like we, we come out of the eclipse and then it's like things start to, the new possibilities start to activate. Okay. And... This is, this is at the tail end for, in Vedic astrology, Jupiter and Aries, and then Jupiter is going to be moving into Taurus in, in May. So, uh, yeah, so there's going to be, you know, that's, a, in terms of the key conjunction astrologically this year, uh, this, this would be one to watch, and especially because it's hot on the heels of the eclipse. Not so big, but worth knowing is Venus is combust, so Venus very close to the sun. So Venus's energy, it, it, Venus gets illuminated in a way, but it also gets burnt, okay? So on to the dream spells, dream spell calendar and the wave spells that we've got. We are now in the earth wave spell, which is, is great. It's, it, it's a real pathfinder energy, earth. And it's also very con much connected to the earth cycles. And isn't it interesting, you know, that we're in that, it's, it's by us really learning to synchronize our efforts. It's a really good time to give offerings to the earth, to, rem to remind yourself you are of this earth and to give, uh, pay homage and, 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 and give respect and reciprocity back to the mother. Because this will help you rather than, if you, if you do that, that will help you to feel more connected in a grounded way on the eighth, because when people are not giving their offerings and not honoring the earth, especially because we're gonna have this new sphere, ferric activation, then people may, this, this is another reason why people may just fly off, but they become, you know, we, we have a real possibility for a lot of people to have very ungrounded spirituality at this time. So yeah, so it's it's nice that we're being able to grind in the energies of the first eclipse. And, and, and that's interesting as well, because the first eclipse, the lunar eclipse that we had on the 25th of March was, it, it's it's like, it was kind of, it, it, it's the less cat, 
less of the catalysts of the two eclipses that we have. And so many people will have closed down certain relationships or projects. And then this one on the eighth is really gonna like pack a punch in terms of, it's not gonna feel complete. We, we, we it, it's a precursor to then another batch of eclipses in, in, in August, October. And we need, it's, we won't get the full download, okay? We're just stating it, but at least we're grinding the first batch. And then there's the sense of anticipation that's building and also this pressure that's coming on from the planets. And then this confusion from Mercury retrograde, all with the function of making us not cling to any particular identity or sense of persona or sense of what we are yet, okay, which is wonderful. I've talked about the dog wave spell, so I'm not going to go into that too much. And then what's beautiful, this is this whole cosmic mechanism that I see here, is that we then come into the night wave spell. And the night is very much about the dream time, the dreaming. We dream everything into being. You don't act, you don't do things into being. That's the wrong way around. That's the patriarchal way, which breaks things. We always dream. We go into a liminal, receptive, collective consciousness. And from there, we, 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 we co-create together without any concepts, but we, with our aspirations for something better, we, this is the most powerful programming place that, that we have in the human body as we understand it in 3D. This is not 3D behavior, but it helps us to manifest in 3D form, okay? And so this is, this is where a lot of people, you see people do eclipse, I got a download, I'm gonna put something on YouTube in two days after the eclipse. And this is where we could have this ungrounded stuff coming through because actually we need to go into the liminal phase. We need to go into the dreaming it's absolutely amazing. We're being asked to, th this is a reclamation. If we talk about this unification of the masculine and feminine, it is a reclamation of the grandmother's codes to bring back the receptive dreamer in all of us. And so this is part of the actual integration of the eclipse is then go into your dreaming pods. Okay, so it's beautiful energy. In the sacred calendar, so we are currently in, T-Hax energy, well, we, we're not just hit it, but we will be. And T-Hax, this again, look at this, the beginning of the healing. So right on eclipse day, we're in that. And we're in the feminine counterpart, feminine energy rising uh, in a new rebirth. And this whole 13 day cycle up to the 12th of April is the beginning of the healing, the beginning of the true essence of the higher homo luminous, you may call them, the Shambhala warriors, the newer vanguards, whatever, okay? Now then, what's beautiful in association with what's happening over, over here in the dream spell calendar, 8th to the 28th, we have 13th to the 25th. So that same marker post, post eclipse is bats. And bats is the weaver of time. And actually, night and bats are both connected to the, the loom, the loom that weaves the tapestry of the universe. So the night is like the pre the pre loom. It's the, the primordial non-conceptual. And then bats is the actual creative magician who weaves the new fabrics of possibilities. So this is a potent time for dancing with space and time. It's absolutely amazing. And then we come into Cat at the end of the month and, and into the beginning of May. And Cat, as you see, this is this character here at the top holding this bag of crazy stuff. And Cat is like, an, it, it's like a net that, that holds both the great stuff, the stuff that's gonna be really useful for us and our community, but it's also holding the burdens. And it has to, you know, and Kat has to learn to be shrewd as to what it keeps and what it throws away. So it doesn't get encumbered by what it's holding. But this, this very end of April is where we can start to reap the insights and the more tangible legacy of the eclipse. It's going to start to make more sense, okay? 
but it, it's also going to mean that we will see the things that we have to take out of that net that are maybe from an old chapter and be, be clever about that. In Vedic astrology, so again, there's so much going on and I haven't even named all of it. Venus is exalted. So Venus is already, at, so Venus, oh no, where are we today? Yes, yeah, it's, it's coming into exaltation. So if, I'm not gonna go into it, but there's this beautiful journey that's been taking place with Venus and Saturn. That's, I, I see these markers coming in the next two or three years where the Shambhala warriors, the new priestesshood, the new priesthood arise. And we've had this karmic, cosmic mechanism that took place. Uh, it's just finishing actually right now as I'm, I'm giving this transmission. And Venus is now going into his exalted position. It loves being Pisces. Like Venus doesn't like working very hard, but it loves being like spiritual. You know, it, in its shadow form, it can be those, it can be spiritual bypassing, you know, it's like, not really anchoring the work, but it, it it's very pleasant because it's had to have its sobriety lesson just recently with Saturn. And then now it comes in to, it's like a beacon during the, it's sitting there with the other planetary activity in, in Pisces. So we've got the bulk of the astrological energy during the eighth eclipse sitting in Pisces. And we've got this beautiful Venusian energy and this is again why i think many sages see this beautiful time that's coming because they can it's almost like this glimpse of our more transcendental shambhala warrior nature can come through however <laughs> sobriety again what we do have um we always have to be careful to not just think we've done it it's all done uh, you know we get these beautiful glimmers it's just like when you, if you do spiritual work, you'll sometimes find that you have this massive realization one day, like, I don't know, some light language comes through or you you find you can do a pranayama and you can hold your breath for 10 minutes. And then the next time you can't do it again. Yeah. And, you, and we have to be very careful to not keep seeking that realization that we had and just to be really grateful that we did have it. Because this is where a lot of people get fixated on these CDs and the special powers and any glimpse of something that's beautiful, but that doesn't mean that it's complete. And we, you know, Kento Rinpoche, my teacher says, you know, don't, don't fixate on these things. We have to remember that these things are impermanent as well. And so I think we get these glimpses of our divinity through, through what's happening. And especially because of this massive collective aspirational field that we're creating over the eclipse time but just before the eclipse on the 6th of april saturn is coming purva badra padra nakshatra so the nakshatras are the higher heavens and it means that saturn is connecting to this constellation purva badra padra and purva badra padra energy is so here's this picture of like a happy a happy mask and a not happy mask and it's called the burning star. It's also connected to twin energy. Like, the, you know, we, we have a lot of twin energy in mythology, good twin, bad twin, naughty twin, good twin. And essentially Purvabhadrapadra's energy is about learning how to use our spiritual life force, sexual kundalini fire, however you might want to call it, to more wisely. And a lot of people, when they start in the spiritual path, they may have a deflected kundalini rising or they may, uh, yeah, you know, the, the energy is circulating around the lower chakras, not, the, not, 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 it's not, it's not fully flowing. And this is where you can see maybe there have been these dodgy gurus in the past or wonky shamans, people who are exploiting other people like sexually in spiritual spaces or really really using the cult of the ego to monetize their spirituality in a very um, individualistic and ego egoic way. And that's that this is this is the fork in the road. And this is Saturn, the Lord of Karma is now here for a chunk of time up, up into 2025, okay? And Purva Bhadrapadra is that journey of you know, are you going to be frazzled with your spirituality? You know, you see these people who blow a fuse, that Purva Badra Padra as well. So are you a good twin or bad twin? 
And it's that journey that we all have to take. Are you a bad black magician or are you working for the benefit of all beings? Are you self self serving? All of those. And it's that journey with the ego and with our karma that, that we have to take. And so there's a challenge here. The Lord of Karma, the Lord of Time is sitting there right as we go into that eclipse. And then we've got Rahu sitting in Pisces, meaning people could be frazzling spiritually as well. So the, we have to be very, very careful that we don't get too much over the top messianic stuff coming through because this is a very big batch of our collective karmic journey in the next year is Saturn's gonna bake some stuff it's going to it's going to bring stuff up for clearing it's beautiful the more people who know about this you can be like is this my ego and what do i do how can i ground my journey how can i be more ethical because yeah you they could get kind of crazy out there i'm just warning you because then if you know you can see is this good twin or naughty twin coming out so i know there's already quite a lot of this in many circles that perplexes people and just what I would say is it could almost be like the purge of that and it could get a little bit murky. It's been it's been leading up to this astrologically. There have been little little moments in the last year or so when I've been making these transmissions where there are little moments where this kind of comes on and now Saturn's going to be there really giving us teachings on that. So if you want to really devote, if you feel you're really on a spiritual path, you're going to keep keep needing to work with your ego, be humble, make it not about you, okay? Because yeah, it's gonna be challenging. And you may see a lot of stuff that isn't actually authentic and it could be quite confusing, right? So this is very much how as well, this, as I say, this Rahu could mean people are delusional around spirituality, so. And, and, and we're going to have more. We're going to have a revisitation of that in the eclipses later in the year. It's very, very interesting because poor, uh, Saturn was not in Purva Badrapadra on the, the eclipse on the 25th. Now it comes into Purva Badrapadra and it's just literally jumped in there. And then it's really sitting more deeply with that later in the year. We have the sun, beautifully exalted in Aries from the 13th of April. So... For a lot of people, you know, in Vedic astrology, this would be marking the beginning of the year. And we did have this forward motion that was very strong, that made a kind of feeling of beginning of the year in the false beginning of the year, year which was January, which is not, it doesn't always happen. January, we had this kickoff energy, this lift off energy. And then we've now got the eclipse coming to, you know, throw a bit of a spanner in the works. But for some people, the the real year is actually going to be beginning in April once, you know, just after the, the, the eclipse, okay? And I mentioned earlier, we've got Sun and Mars together, so they're conjuncting around the 10th or the 11th. But, yeah, there's this kind of pressure valve of the, you know, these different energies. At least it's good for working, but it could be very stressy. There could be frustration. You could feel this rising pressure with things. So, synthesis. So, after the eclipse, deep... Oh, it did that by itself. Okay. After the eclipse, deep work can take place in the new sphere and the dream time, and this will help to bring about higher possibilities. This is a really good time to be a quantum architect and to work, as I said, with the yin receptive dreaming states and... To, to to use, you know, this is the energy of the sacral when it's used appropriately. And, and and everybody has a sacral area. So, you know, we could say it's the womb, but it's the womb that's beyond gender. It's a cosmic womb energy. So there's a very, it, it's a very beautiful time, but, you know, things won't seem so tangible. If they seem tangible to you, it's probably, it might not be really what you're supposed to be staying with because we really need to give the integration time for this to go the right way around. So it needs to go into spirit, etheric energy fields before it comes down and filters into 3D. You know, that's that's important. You know, we the 3D being is the karma being. The more subtle we go, the more subtle the karma and the lesser the karma in many ways. So 
the more you can take it out of out of like trying to overthink it, the better. And as I've said, many people may have abrupt awakenings, and we need to be very, very mindful of spiritual uh, delusion right now. And uh, just, you know, you may have people around you who start to like hear voices or have these psychotic episodes, and just you know, be there for people. It could it, people could pop. Okay. This whole thing with Saturn means that our relationship to power, karma, superficiality and service, and especially with the dog energy being prominent when we come into the eclipse, this uh, this is all creating another shift. And we have to be prepared to do grounded work and set the foundations for a true, true gateway. Finally, you know, the, the timelines for a possible golden age, we have almost 10 years, okay? This is a very important portal, but it doesn't mean everything's happened. But yes, you know, this month is massive. It's an opening portal. It's like a key. And the more of us who utilize those keys, the more we will help to create a new, a new paradigm. And how I see it in many ways is that those who have been doing the work and who have done, you know, are somewhere on their journey, we need to get the pillars and the gatekeepers, the trees of the ecosystem standing strong so that more and more people can come around and then do, create their vital function in the ecosystems. And so it's not like it's all done. It's not like everybody's healed. Everybody's even started to awaken. And I think we would be really erroneous if we were to say that that just all completes now. But I do feel that there's a stepping up of the wisdom keepers, which is really typified through what took place in Palenque, that the tribes have converged, okay? That's so powerful and so needed. They're speaking and, and they're moving beyond the trauma programming to say this is the preparation programming, not, not the persecution programming, okay? They're going beyond the victim perpetrator paradigm. And we need to use our privilege, use our energy, use our mobility if we have it to really, and that's why we have to honor the Saturn and, and honor and, and cultivate and work with the inner fire in the pure way. Those of us who are ready, who are hearing the call, we need to cultivate and do the work. It's almost like nesting parents, creating the space for the newborns, okay? More and more people are going to be coming into these transformative processes. And this is the, we need to humbly walk our talk to get prepared. We have this amazing opening portal uh, and the work begins, but there's this really beautiful unification energy, but with that comes responsibility. So, if you would like to know more about some of these codes, we are deeply working with Venus and Saturn codes for the next year or so to help people understand some of the micro programming that's kind of hidden from sight in the celestial bodies to help people understand how to really dance with, you know, Venus, the planet of joy and love. Okay, love, but in, in the high way, because Venus can also be skillful means and Tantra and weaving with all that is. And then how do we work with Saturn, Lord of time, Lord of karma? Because when we can master those two, because of the way they're conjuncting and traveling at the moment, it's going to help the authentic journey that we need to take so that those of us who are the pillars and gatekeepers can hold the space around maybe the flaky awakenings, the psychotic episodes. We need the caregivers. We need those who are strong to be resilient and to be focused. And therefore, if you are one of those people, you need to understand your own Venus and Saturn, understand their journeys so that you can be here in an authentic way, okay? So thank you all for listening. I'm wishing you all an absolutely amazing, enlightening, transformative month of April. And please do get it, uh, get in touch if you want to get readings or to receive any of our teachings. Please do like and subscribe because once we once I've finished the yeah I've finished the book, but I've got to get it printed and it's very close. Uh, and and once that's done, I'm going to be making way more transmissions. So I I look forward to giving you you know ahead of time weavings where possible. Take care, everybody. Ciao, ciao.